Now, here's an interesting thought. In medical school, uh, well, up to 70% of all the people going into medical school in the UK are women now. I haven't got the statistic for those going in to read law. Do you know what the proportion is of people uh, going in to read law? 64% are women. Now, how did I sort of guess that? Because the, the men are just nowhere. Uh, uh, men are being outgunned from GCSEs through to A-levels. They're being outgunned, outcompeted with at every level in our society from the academic point of view. Uh, so let's work with 64%. By the way, that's today. What about tomorrow? It's a trend. Uh, what we're seeing, therefore, is men exiting law as a profession. Hello? What we're seeing is a feminization of law. We're already seeing two-thirds of your best talent coming into the legal firms are women. Now, put your hand up if most of your senior partners are women. Put your hands up if you don't have a woman who's a senior partner. See, this is a really serious issue. You might say, oh yeah, well the trouble is these women, they're not very serious, they're all very well, they, they, they peak early but disappoint later, which is why we don't promote them. So, I beg your pardon? These are the brightest and the best people inside your firms. So I want to know where these women go and how quickly do they leave. Why are they leaving? You see, uh, when I look at boards of multinationals who are mainly men, I say, how is it that I know that your brightest marketers, your brightest finance people, your brightest legal talent coming into your organisation, your brightest innovators, your brightest people, I know most of them are women. That's why you recruit them. But I know that there's a dearth of them in the upper levels of the organisation. What that must mean is that many of you men sitting here are only here because the women who are the most, mo more competent than you were decided not to compete. So on your board, uh, uh, you, presumably there are at least four of you on the board who shouldn't be there. If your cohort of women had remained in the organisation, they of course would be on the board instead of you. Does it matter? Yes, it does. Talent really matters. So. Part of it is a culture, it's a cultural issue, and I think that every one of our firms, every one of our organisations needs to start asking those who are exiting, say, okay, what is it that we have failed to understand about you? And I would suggest one of the things uh, that it will often come back is, that is, uh, is the issue of balance, or the issue of not, not being understood that actually there are much more to life. Uh, there are young children, there are dependent parents, there are double careers, this is a very common one. See, my firm doesn't understand that there are two careers in my household. Uh, my, my, my husband is being relocated, and I have to make a choice. Now, I, no one, no one, my firm has not had a discussion with us as a household, which is blooming madness. There's two of us in the household. There's no way one of us can be promoted without the other being involved, because each promotion is going to involve a relocation. So they need to talk to us together and have a joined up view of our future as a household, what it is that we want, what we're excited about, what we're concerned about, what would induce us, us, to stay in the firm, because actually us as a family in the firm, it's not just one. And increasingly it's the guys who are talking this conversation as well. 12% um, of mothers want to work full time only. But very few of them will tell you the truth. I can't tell you how many times a woman has come to me and said, I dare not tell my boss what I actually feel. So why is that? Well, because it marked me down straight away for the exit chamber. Or it would look over, overlook me. I say, OK, so you're an economic slave. Does I beg your pardon? Well, if you're afraid to leave or to be exited or to be overlooked, you are already becoming an economic slave. You need to have the conversation, because actually, to do anything else is dishonest. But you need to state your terms. And the very fact that you had that conversation, I guarantee, will change something. Next week, she comes thundering back. She says, hey, guess what? See, so, yeah, I can guess. Yeah, you won't believe what's happened. Yeah, I believe it. <laughs> what happened? She says, I had the conversation. Yep. Mm -hmm. And? <coughs> it was amazing. Yep. He went into shell shock and uh, threw a tantrum, which I knew he would. 
when I threatened to leave, and I basically said, I am leaving, I will be out of here within six months. And then he asked me why, and I told him why. And then he threw another tantrum. And I was afraid he wasn't going to speak to me for a week. And then he said he'd think about it. I told him, I said, I said, I, I, my aim is simple, I only want to work 145 hours a week. Which means I know in this firm I have to work, drop a day, because, uh, you know, full time is 190 hours a week, four days is 145 hours a week, I know how it works. So I said, I, 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 I'm not I'd like to drop a day, I am dropping a day. Actually I'm leaving because I don't think you can handle it. He came thundering back the following morning. He said, I need to see you in my office straight away. He said, don't you dare think about leaving this organisation. I've, I've, I've had a, a ghastly night's sleep. I can't bear the thought of you going. And uh, you're just the sort of... The very fact that you even, uh, you know, you're on your way out has made me realise that you're just the sort of person um, we've been sort of overlooking for a while. I absolutely need you. And what's more, I'm going to increase your rate. I think we should employ you on more than I've been paying you full time and I'm, I'm happy to drop you to three and a half days a week. You can work from home whenever you like. Now, does that sort you out? She stayed. But what a pity that the conversation had happened so late because they very nearly lost it completely. Um, so it's about part-time, job share, flexible start, finished time, shorter working weeks. It's about other stuff too. It's about understanding the... Uh, um, minute by minute flexibility. Dad's in this situation as well. You see, if you think that uh, something like in 45% of households now, the wife is earning more than the husband. So we've got husbands who are under big pressure in those households. It's their career secondary now, even if they work for you. So it's the husband actually who's going to have to do the childcare. It's the husband who's actually going to need to think Gosh, our childminder is sick, I've got one of our children sick and has been taken to hospital and I've got another child who's just been sent home from school. I need some off and I need it now. To have a situation where they're actually, that, that is understood, it's actually absolutely part of the culture. You say, well, sorry, you're in real trouble with me, why did you even come in this morning? I'm shocked and appalled that you came in this morning. You should have phoned me straight away. We've got contingencies in place. We'd have sorted it all out. You should, you know, you should have phoned me at 4 o'clock in the morning the moment you knew that you were taking the first child in by ambulance. You know, please don't do that to me again. <laughs> Promise me you'll let me know early. But many firms don't have that kind of culture.